Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I decided to put a Ripple and XRP Greatest Video Hits uh, show together, and that is what I'm going to show you today. I, mean, I hope I can get through this pretty quick, so it may be a longer than usual video, but I'm about to do it, and I, I want to make sure all of you, any of you that want to send me your greatest video hits from like the way I've done it here in Twitter, I'll do another show on doing this same thing because I know I missed a lot of them, but I went back over the last couple of years and this is nothing but some of my favorite videos from over the course of the last couple of years that have come up as we've all gone down this journey with Ripple and XRP and digital assets. So here we go. I'm going to start with this one. Let me turn up the volume so that you can hear and I'm going to go as fast as I can go through these. This, and I'll try to tell you kind of who these guys are but the, if I need to, but this is the senior minister for the, he's the chairman of the group of 30. He's mentioned in his presentation uh, about country platforms. Very interesting. It was a proposal that was agreed to by the U.S., by China, by Japan, by the Europeans, and by almost everyone in the emerging world. It was a proposal that involves everyone making some adjustments because it was about a level playing field of global, regional, and bilateral actors in each developing country. And the common interest they all have is that it will enable them to mobilize a lot more private capital. And if you mobilize a lot more private capital, each of you is more likely to succeed in your own bridge or railway line or power station. Okay, so there's one. Let's go on to the next one. This is the presentation of Ripple Home. I think there was some sound with that. Let's see. Welcome to the future of RippleNet Home. Okay, the sound doesn't start till about there. Welcome to the future of RippleNet Home. Imagine an entirely new experience where you can get insights about your company's payment flows and performance in real time. as well as intelligent suggestions for how you can grow your market share and increase your competitive advantage. All right, let's see here. Okay, now this is Michael Arrington when he was talking about moving money with using XRP. Like, yeah, people, the tribalism in this industry is insane. So there, there's Bitcoin maximalists, there's every, but everybody agrees like, you know, XRP sucks. And, and I, I, actually, I don't really get it, right? I mean, it's, they're a legitimate company. They don't pretend to be something they're not. And they're really good at one thing, moving money fast and cheap. And um, it's fantastic. It fills a big need. And for a hedge fund like us to be able to denominate in Ripple and XRP, I just did the same thing, uh, <laughs> is, is really, really, really good. We did our first close. Uh, we moved north of four, $50 million into the company in Ripple and XRP in like two seconds and it cost 30 cents. Now that is amazing. The only, there's no way to do that with fiat yeah, or Bitcoin. Yeah. There's just no way to do it that fast and that cheaply. And, and so it serves a really useful uh, need for us. And, and then also when, when our LPs eventually redeem, hopefully never, but when they want some of the money back, we, we just send it in XRP again. And there's no three day wait for international wires or one day wait for US wires. We're not paying wire fees and all that. It's just, I don't understand why that's hard to understand. And so the religious wars aside, the tribalism aside, it does some things really well. And we love it for that. That being said, just because we're denominated in XRP, I'm not a special pleader for XRP. I don't work for them. 
The company itself is not our LP. Other people who had XRP are. I like them, I think they're great, but they're like less than 5% of our asset base at this point. Like we do invest in XRP, but most of our investments are in other things. All right, and then uh, by the way, I wanted to thank especially Stephen Bull from the DIA. Many of these clips are from him. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. This is um, a guy that got on stage. So there's over 1,600 cryptocurrencies today that use blockchain. So all of us have probably heard about Bitcoin, some of us about Ethereum. In Japan, almost every bank is starting to work with something called XRP, or you may know it as Ripple. And there's many others. Okay, moving along. Here's Brad Garlinghouse on Bloomberg. Brad Garlinghouse, he joins us right now. And you know, David, uh, some say Ripple could be the next Bitcoin. What do you think, Brad? Is that a compliment that Ripple could be the next Bitcoin? Well, I think if we're solving a real problem and it's a, at scale, uh, then I think it's a compliment. I think the most important thing that is going on in crypto is understanding what is real and what is just hype. Uh, some, I think, may look back on Bitcoin and find that it was the Napster of digital assets. What I mean by that is Napster was the first to digitize music and demonstrate, hey, if you digitize music, you can do a lot of cool things with that. But ultimately, they were circumventing trademark laws, they were circumventing royalty payments, and government stepped in and Napster was not successful. But Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, they were very successful. I think what you'll find is that maybe the next generation of digital assets ends up solving some of the original problems that Bitcoin set out to solve. So Ripple Net, Ripple CEO Brad Gollingham. Well, let's see what we have next. Um, this is from Jack the Rippler, and this is from CNBC. Yes, it is a big time move in XRP today, basically the parent company of Ripple. The crypto shooting higher after blockchain startup got an eye popping valuation. Kate Rooney is out in San Francisco with the details. When they sent me the story, I said, well, Kate screwed up. That can't be, you know, billion. It's got to be million. What is this? <laughs> Ryan, you're, you're reading it right. So Ripple announced a $200 million funding round today, and that money is not in cryptocurrency. The new cash injection brings Ripple's valuation to $10 billion, making it one of the most valuable private startups in Silicon Valley. But a key lifeblood of its business has been tanking. Ripple is the majority owner of cryptocurrency XRP and sells it every quarter to help fund the business. Ripple also uses XRP as a so-called bridge currency for cross-border transactions. XRP had skyrocketed alongside Bitcoin two years ago. It's now down roughly 50 percent this year, while Bitcoin has actually rallied 80 percent. Ripple's main business is a cross-border payment system built on blockchain that's used to send money around the world. The startup says it now has 300 customers globally and ink deals with MoneyGram, Santander, and American Express, Brian. That's a good story. It's a big one. Kate Rooney out in San Francisco. Thank you very much. So let's put that $10 billion valuation into perspective, shall we, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. It is bigger than the market caps of Bed Bath & Beyond, Whirlpool, and Planet Fitness. So does Ripple really belong in the $10 billion club, Guy Dummy? You're Take darn... You're darn right it belongs there. Okay, what do we have next? From Bank XRP, this is Michael Arrington on stage. I love Michael Arrington. I think I think that he is a he's a gunslinger and I love it. I would have gone with a different argument. I would have just I would have anyway. Because uh I mean, what does centralization really mean? I mean, if we're talking about the most decentralized cryptocurrency, the most censorship resistant, the best in every way, we're talking about Ripple and XRP, right? I mean, and I'm an unbiased, and I'm not a special pleader, I'm not a special pleader for Ripple or XRP, but, uh, and we do have a slight conflict of interest there, but, uh, okay, so the real, so look, I mean, XRP is, is awesome. Uh, I mean, it just really is fantastic, and I just can't go on enough about it. But see, I think that uh, if I had to pick a, a investment that we made that isn't XRP, which is awesome, um, <laughs> I would actually choose Arweave, which in our prep call was brought up by some, I think, Danny, did you bring it up? Yeah, but Arweave is a company that we invested in that is... Okay, I'm not going to play the rest of that one. That's the XRP part. But then there's this. This is probably um, this is probably my favorite clip ever. I think, uh, I mean, what is the next move? You know, on Ripple's roadmap, in your opinion, <laughs> to put so, you on the spot so, here. <laughs> so, no, no, it's very simple. So I think one thing, if there is one message that you can get in this room is 
Ripple is not an ordinary company. We are not here to make a, have a small market share or do X, do Y, and make small amount of money or something to happen. We are here to make a dent in the universe. Either we will change the remittance un universe, the way you understand, the way value gets transferred across the world, between people, between institutions, or we will just fade away. So it's almost zero or one, and some of it comes from our Silicon Valley arrogance. Some of it comes from, yeah, that's the reason six years ago we were born with the mission of moving money like information moves today, right? And we are making it possible working with the existing ecosystem. So I think this is a key differentiator about Ripple, and that's the reason we are a monoline company. Every day we get tens of ideas to say, why don't you do security settlement? Why don't you work in trade finance? Why don't you do X, Y, Z? And what we tell them is, um, just cross-border remittances is $155 trillion problem. We'll solve this first. We'll make a difference to everybody who's present in this room. And once we have made the difference, then only we will look at something else. So we are like uh, Google is for search, Ripple is for remittances. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it right, and we will not rest till we earn your respect and your business. Great clip. Okay, moving on. This, well, I think I may have... Uh... Yeah, I think I doubled up on that one. We've already done that one. Um, and then you've got Jack the Rippler sent me this one, or, or no, so I, I found it from Jack the Rippler. No, so as I said, the X current product, the way it's implemented today, uses fiat currencies. So the convergence that we see coming in the next phase is for banks to have an option to say, do I want to use XRP? So instead of the German bank holding Turkish Lira, they could say, Akbank, uh, are you able to accept XRP and give me Turkish Lira? Here's 100 Lira worth of XRP. Here's a million Lira worth of XRP. Mm -hmm. And instantly, that can be settled without having to hold balances. So that's, that's the, the holy grail. That's the ultimate end goal that we're aiming for. But if you don't have connectivity, you, know, you, you can't even start. So first, you get the banks connected. They do what they're doing today better. They like it. They build new services on it. Then they go, I want to do this in 100 countries, but I can't hold currencies in 100 countries. Well, guess what? You got XRP. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's a phase strategy, but that's the way you know, banking works. Over then. Okay. That's uh, Dilip Rao. And then we've got this. This was from PHDJ. Here we go. I'm speaking from Ripple and XRP because we use that, that asset because Ryan's it's a gun. half a cent a per payment, it's basically free, it's, uh, it scales, and it's efficient. It's 1,500 transactions a second, it's no ener nearly no energy burn. So we're at a point today where there are real solutions to all of these challenges. I'm speaking from Ripple. And so he's there, this video was cool because it shows this Ross Lekla, who was the former Deputy General Counsel for the IMF, and he's nodding in agreement um, with what um, Ryan Zagon was saying. This is another one of my favorite crip, uh, clips They're from Jack the Rippler. This is Chris Larson at Money 2020 a year or two ago. It's 10 years out on the financial crisis. We still don't have the infrastructure, perhaps, to prevent the next one. And I think this is where digital assets can really help because an efficient digital asset uh, can really solve um, some of the key problems in global liquidity. You know, the world's got trillions and trillions of dollars tied up in liquidity just to get around how clunky the movement of value is around the world. If with a really efficient digital asset, something like XR, XRP, again, that's what we believe will be the, the, the most efficient, um, you can now reduce trillions and trillions of capital from being tied up. So you can make those transfers instantly as a bank or as a payment provider or as an enterprise without having to have money pre-positioned all over the world. So that's great clip. Okay, and then ooh, we've got uh, Arrington again. I love playing his clips. He is he is um, he's not afraid. <laughs> I've got Mike Arrington from Arrington XRP Capital. Mike, nice to have you back on Crypto Trader. Oh, thanks for having me. So, why do you start a fund that is denominated in Ripple? What's the oh in XRP? Why did you hate Ripple so much before last week? I didn't think that Ripple had a use case. I now know that it does have a use case, and it's a, a very powerful tool on XRapid. Do you think, I, here's my theory. You, you got on their case a little bit to encourage them to spend the time with you that you wanted to spend with them so that you could then sort of call them, you know, you want to be the kingmaker, which you're becoming. I've watched you progress over the last year and you've gone from 
relatively lower uh, uh, sort of ability to do that to you know somebody who everybody's dying to be on your show. They're lining up here to be on it. So I just think maybe it was more about that. King making uh, than anything so. else. I do. Here's why. Okay, to be more serious. I told you this in December. I think you were also confused back then. Like everybody is. Ripple, or in this case XRP is the actual currency, is a really, really good way to move money. So we denominate our fund in XRP because it's a fantastic way to move money cross-border very quickly at almost zero cost. So there's a lot of tribalism in cryptocurrency and a lot of Bitcoin maximalists, etc. And the one thing they all agree on is they all hate XRP because it's centralized, that they think it's corporate managed, etc. I mean, none of that's really true. But what it is is a fantastic way to move money. And while the other more decentralized cryptocurrencies sort of find their way towards becoming more efficient, in the meantime, XRP is like fantastic. And so from a hedge fund point of view, it's great to denominate ourselves in XRP. So I must admit, the XRP token is a very fast moving token and a great token to move yeah. cross border very quickly. I've got my great video. Okay, and now this is one of my favorites as well. This is from Jack the Rippler, and this is when Brad Garlinghouse was on stage with Ross Lecklow from the IMF. You want to take one? Go for it. The first one's for you. IMF. Do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not put that up there. Remember, I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um... I, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the IMF yeah, is going to uh, do. That might be one of the best videos ever, ever that's been seen in the XRP community, actually. Great stuff. And then, of course, we can't have, well, you can't do a video greatest hits without showing David Schwartz. The XRP ledger is decentralized because no organization or individual has any legal right or ability to control it. Every participant enforces every single rule and the system is governed by all of its participants. David Schwartz, a rather unlikely cheerleader in any other sense, considers himself a cheerleader for the XRP ledger. I, I think while proof of work has kind of proven to be a dead end and hasn't produced any technological innovations of any significance, nor has, has it's produced actually increasing centralization and in the systems based on it, uh, there's a lot of work to improve the decentralization and improve the robustness of systems based on distributed agreement protocols. Historically, the XRP ledger, as the stakeholders have broadened, has become more decentralized and the influence of any single participants has reduced, and we would expect that only to continue over time. <laughs> That's great. That's from Bank XRP. And then we've got this from Panda Ripple XRP. I love when we can show videos with Miguel Baez. We just spoke with Tom McLeod of Omni. We're seeing Omni integrating XRP into their platform. New use cases for XRP. Uh, what does that do to global liquidity? Yeah, it's it's incredibly accretive to global growth of liquidity, especially for XRP if it's being used in those flows. So what, what is liquidity? Liquidity means that I can move value through XRP without necessarily impacting the price. Right? So I can get in, I can get out without having major market shifts. If you look at other markets, uh, take FX as an example, the driving force of FX liquidity is not speculation, it's not liquidity provisioning by market participants, it's the use of that liquidity by real businesses. So as an example, if you have an auto parts manufacturer in Japan who's getting paid in euros every day, they need to swap that euro for yen. So they are in the markets regardless of whether it's going up, whether it's going down, they don't care, right? Omni is the same way. They're going to be using XRP liquidity no matter what's happening in the markets. Coil will do something similar. XRapid will do something similar, right? So as you drive more and more of these use cases, liquidity should start to really pick up pace. You mentioned XRapid for that specifically. With deeper liquidity, what does that do for those financial institutions that are using that? The more liquidity you have, the tighter spreads, the more efficient XRapid and XRP end up being as that um, real-time on-demand sort of payment funding mechanism, right? So the more Omni uses it, the more Coil uses it, the more other use cases out there start to use this liquidity, the more the volumes grow, the tighter the spreads get, and the easier it is to move money through XRP and XRapid. Great. Um, okay. And then we've got David Schwartz again from Han Solo. Huge is micropayments. Um, 
This gets a little out there for this audience, maybe, but I think micropayments are going to sort of take over the world the way packet data kind of took over the world. I think that if you can make small payments very cheaply and you can make billions of them without a problem, then you don't need, any, you don't need anything else. You don't need some special way to make larger payments. Huge is micropayments. Um, so there you go with that. And then we've got Brad Garlinghouse again. This one's great. Watch this. There have been reports that uh, Bank of America has taken out a patent that suggests it's using the Ripple le ledger for its currency transactions. Can you comment on that? I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> can you confirm or kill the speculation? I can neither confirm nor kill. <laughs> Like we are, I think, widely known to be working with a lot of banks around the world, and certainly some of the largest banks already are in the world are customers of ours today, uh, and we'll continue to work with big banks around the world. And uh, I, I too was surprised by uh, that patent application because we're, we're, we have not announced anything. All right. Well, I had to try yeah, and ask. Enough. Thank you. What is very cool about this particular video, as I recall, and don't quote me, but as I recall. That patent, the patent, the Bank of America patent was actually dug up by someone in the XRP community. And I don't remember who it was. And I'm sure you guys will remind me. But that, how cool is that? And it got all the way to not just to Brad Garlinghouse, but also to Bloomberg. <laughs> um, and then we've got this. Stephen, I have to thank him again. Stephen Bull from the DIA. Um, I mean, this guy has really done his work over the last couple of years. The only Ripple product that actually requires the use of XRP is XRapid. So what do you think gives XRP token value as opposed to Ripple Labs? Well, I would point out that re like requiring people to use a token is completely like the wrong strategy. We tried that strategy in the early days and it was very, very slow going because you encounter these chicken and egg problems where nobody wants to make payments because there's no liquidity. Nobody wants to provide liquidity because there's no payments. F trying to force people to use an asset that's not the best asset for their use case is just going to it's just going to build a terrible system that nobody's going to want to use. We didn't build an Internet that was biased in favor of Twitter. Like even if Twitter built the Internet, they would have built an Internet if they were smart that would have been completely neutral and completely universal to give them the largest market of people to market Twitter to. So we're kind of doing the same thing. We're trying to build neutral and universal platforms, and we believe XRP can win for the use case we're targeting, settling international payments, because it's the fastest, because it's the cheapest, and so on, because of the throughput, all of the features that we built into, into it to make it the best asset for that use case. If it's not the best asset for our use case, there's no reason people should be using it for that use case. Um, other people are using XRP. Well, let me talk about XRapid first. So XRapid is um, a product that settles international payments with XRP today. So we are beginning to connect like the payment system to our settlement asset. That's kind of been our vision from day one is, well, not quite day one, but from 2013, practically day one in this space, um, this idea of a payment network that settles on an open asset. Um, there are other people building on top of the XRP ledger. Coil is building um, using Interledger, which is an interoperability protocol, um, a micropayment system to do things like pay for content. Um, so, I mean, there is an ecosystem around it building various different products. All right. Let's see what we have next. This is Brad Garlinghouse, June uh, 2019. Here we this go. This week will probably be the best week of signed contracts at, at Ripple ever. Right. Wow. It has been a massive call to action because, you know, again, Facebook kind of came out and said, we don't need Western Union anymore. Right. Well, if you're a bank, if you're Western Union, you kind of, huh. That's interesting. Right. Right. And I think the banks realize that if Facebook is going to be a competitor in this space, mm -hmm. they can't depend upon a technology like Swift to compete in the marketplace. So I want to go to questions in, a, in just a second. So please uh, think of this week. That was when the announcement of Libra came out. And then you've got this from Dilip Rao. Watch this. Thanks today is something based on the interledger protocol because they didn't want to use the public ledger but ultimately when they use xrp for liquidity that's when the two will, will converge so from a use case point of view we think uh, we still have a, a solid platform you know a solid base as to what is be the problem being solved is it a big problem and who is ultimately going to use xrp and in our case we think it's going to be financial institutions it's going to be market makers who want to come in and play in that business and it's a huge, as I mentioned, a twenty-seven trillion dollar, yeah. you know, uh, base uh, that is there today. So if you go by that, uh, I'm not selling my XRP. Right. 
So he's not selling his XRP. <laughs> um, and then you've got this. Now, let's see here. Yeah, um, this is Graham Bright. Uh, I actually met him at Swell. He's the head of compliance operations for Euro Exum Bank. Okay, now you are, of course, heavily involved um, in crypto, so that's what we're going to um, discuss today. And initially, okay. the bank was not dealing um, in crypto, but something obviously changed. So can you explain what happened? Um, because you're not holding dollars anymore, are you? No, that's right. From, so there's a traditional banking model which says that every currency you need to move into, you have a Nostro account or a correspondent account in that country, and you have to transfer or debit and credit an account in that particular country, which means you're holding many different relationships in different jurisdictions. What we've done with the use of cryptocurrency and Ripple in particular, the XRP, is to be able to look at liquidity levels for each of those particular currencies and only have one unique currency we need to switch into, which is XRP. And that means immediately the cost of doing these particular transactions is reduced. We're looking at a ubiquity, a spread that we can go to any country and not have to hold their particular currency in order to provide a service to their local SMEs who are trying to do trade business. So that has a number of unique benefits. For us, it means, again, the holding of correspondent relationships is expensive. We don't need to do that anymore. For on behalf of our customer, we can pay away in local currency, and they can pay their supplier very easily without having to hold another currency as well. So from an overall point of view, it really facilitates, as I say, the, the whole of the trade flow, but also means that you don't have to hold dollars, which means your cash flow can be protected as well. Okay. Now Okay. Okay. Sorry. I had a little bit of a malfunction there before I played this Bitcoin bin video, but, but to give you, to let you know about what this is, Bitcoin bin is a Bitcoin Litecoin influencer. And he was the first guy that I ever saw who finally acknowledged that XRP is going to be a huge part of the financial system. And this was really his coming out party to the XRP community. I didn't even know who he was until I saw this video, but this is a good one. ...going to have. It isn't what I want. It's, it's what is, is. This is hard for me to take. The number one coin of the future is going to be it's kind of a toss up between Ethereum and Ripple. I have a new understanding of what's being built. And this is the plan. So, yes, I had a phone call with a very influential guy in cryptocurrency. Very, uh, he's plugged into the highest levels of the elites. He was mentioning companies that I have never, uh, uh, look up a company called Reba Pay. Did a little research on them. They are huge. Um, they offer software called Ariba. And apparently Ariba is very, 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 very intricate part of the global um, structure. I have to admit that Ripple is actually going to be part of the future. We developed Xavier from the outset to be hosted, which is another ah, so very important to sit on the client very side. Very important point, or even on, on the cloud. So the idea is yeah. if you have Kariba in the cloud or SAP's FSN network, for example, mm -hmm. I'm just picking a few names out. Um, the direction of travel for software provided to corporates large and small is to put them on the cloud. But it'd be your own instance in a private cloud somewhere. That's correct. That's correct. Of <laughs> the <laughs> great video. Now, um, this is volume one of my of Ripple XRP greatest video hits, uh, bullish video hits. 
And but I'm I'm going to do other volumes because I know there are so many great videos out there. So please send me your uh, what you think are some of the best videos that that people have embedded on Twitter. That's the easy way for me to present it, and I will put yours on there too. I'll I'll give you credit and everything. Uh, but this is to me this was something that needed to be done. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Bitcoin Ben finally realized in 2018 that XRP is going to be huge. And he was one of the first to admit it. So good for him. Thank you for listening.